traders, we have got a great video for you today because we are talking about an indicator that many of you have probably heard of, wondered about, or even tried once or twice in your career. And that indicator can naturally be found up in the indicators, metrics, and strategies menu, clicking technicals, and then scrolling through our built-in indicators menu. Now, I'm just going to, in the search box, type in RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index. And I'm going to do two things to start this video. First of all, I'm going to click this little tooltip icon because that opens up the Help Center. Now I'm just going to sort of put that off to the side for a second. Go back to our Indicators menu, RSI, click, and now it's added to my chart. Now I know it's added to my chart because check it out. I can see RSI right at the bottom here. It even says RSI. You just can't miss it. So always make sure you click those indicators to get them added to your chart. And also if you want, Give them a favorite so they now have a star icon and you can find them in your favorite section. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, I am looking at a daily chart of Amazon. I've got candlesticks open, but do keep in mind that the RSI is going to work on any type of chart type you're looking at. It really shouldn't change much. The key thing that you really want to pay attention to, though, is, of course, the symbol you're looking at, but also the time frame you're looking at because the RSI is being calculated based off of the time frame. So each candle represents a day. Here's our RSI being calculated on this daily chart. If I change this chart now to 30 minutes, well, the calculation changes because now every candle is 30 minutes. So the pricing information is going to be different the way it's calculated. The time frame is going to be different, the starting and ending points. So the whole point here is that make sure you understand that you're putting this indicator on a time frame that matters to you. Now, I'm going to stay to daily, daily charts. We all know them. And now I want to talk about what the RSI is showing. So what the RSI is showing, which is really important to understand, is it is showing the relative strength of the specific symbol. And that relative strength, by the way, this is so important for you to, to understand, is being calculated by the average gain of end days up average loss of n days down. Now, n, of course, is the number that you put into the indicator. This is, you know, if we double click, RSI length 14. So we're now we're getting the average up and down days over the last, in this case, 14 days, because it's a daily chart. If I was on one minute, it'd be over the last 14 minutes. So let's actually expand this. Let's go to, how about 25 days? Maybe there's about 25 days in the month where equities are open, because equities are closed on Saturday and Sunday. So we've got an RSI of 25. Let's click OK. So now what we're calculating is the RSI, 100 minus 100, divided by, in parentheses, 1 plus RS, where RS equals the average gain of end days up, the average loss of end days down. So what you're really looking at here is how strong is this symbol on its up days compared to its down days, or vice versa, how weak is this symbol on its up days compared to its down days. And by doing that, you get this wonderful RSI indicator. Now, what we can tell right off the bat just by looking at this chart is that Amazon has been pretty weak. Look at this, it's just gone straight down essentially. So Amazon has been rather weak here and we can just see it's actually looks like it's at its lowest RSI on this, based off of this metric, which we had, I believe to 25, it's at its lowest RSI since November of 2022. So you don't see this that often. This is pretty historic what we're actually charting right now. Now, a very important thing about RSI is to remember that there, it's not a guarantee buy or sell signal. No, no, no. There's no such thing as a guarantee in markets. No indicator works 100% of the time, but it is a way to get a general feel for the movement of a specific price of an asset that you're charting and whether it's been rather weak over a time period or really strong over a time period. Now, you may have heard about momentum. Momentum is an important concept here because look at RSI going up in in this region here. And even look at it testing the very upper band here. Do you see this? It really went quite high on this RSI indicator. But remember, just because it got high doesn't mean it's a short or doesn't mean it's overdone. That could actually mean momentum. And you can even see where RSI was here. So that lines up with this. It definitely fizzled out, but it actually went then to all new highs later on. So you RSI needs to be treated with a very, very specific eyesight for 
all of these factors such as momentum, what's the entire market doing? Is this giving me a contrarian signal or is it giving me a trend signal? And that is a really effective way to put this indicator to work. Now, in this example, we just had a historic sell-off. Here's Amazon. Look at this historic sell-off. And RSI now is down here at the lows. So we have to ask ourselves, is this just the start of a trend? Like, could RSI get worse? Could it really stay down here for a while and maybe even test the extremes, which means we could see another move lower? Or is this overdone? Has the market just gone a little too crazy? And this RSI sign is showing us that the selling has been way too intense. The average selling days are just that much greater than the average up days. And this thing is just due to bounce, regression to the mean, some sort of back to its average. Well, that's for you to really analyze and think through if that's the trade or the play you want to make. But by utilizing this tool, this is how you can effectively start to think about these things. Now, I'd want to get into the settings of this indicator because that is also a very important component of this tutorial video. Now, we're, look, we're looking at two lines here. We've got this purple line and this yellow line. They represent two entirely different things. The purple line is the RSI indicator. You can see that in the indicator fields, RSI, RSI based moving average. So the RSI itself is the purple indicator. The moving average of the RSI is the yellow indicator. So you can also see all this by double clicking on the indicator and adjusting these settings to your exact needs. Now, as you recall, our RSI length, we set it to 25 earlier in the video. An important feature here is your source. Now, when markets are open and trading, there's an open, there's a high, there's a low, and there's a close. There's a lot of data points going on within markets. There's also other ways to get to this specific number based off of if you want to do high, low divided by two, high, low, close divided by three, open, high, low, close divided by four, the choice is ultimately yours. Oftentimes, traders and investors will say the close is sort of the final print of the day, the final print of that candle. So it sort of encapsulates the, 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 the price the market wanted to pay for that exact time period. Others might say do open high, low, close divided by four. And that is the price that you should be calculating these indicators on. And actually, if you do it by open high, low, close divided by four, you can actually see we are now in the extreme territory and it does change the calculation quite a bit. So that's another important feature to understand is how do you want to calculate your RSI? Do you want to calculate it just off of the close, the open, the high, the low, the OHLC divided by four? The choice is in your hands and it's going to come down to how you see and think about markets. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep this closed just because that's the default setting. There's also this great feature to calculate the divergence as well, which is really a first of its kind feature as far as I know in the world of RSI. And it's just such a cool feature that TradingView offers. And what it's going to do is show you these divergences here on the specific RSI chart and tell you whether it's a bearish divergence or a bullish divergence. So you can see here, bearish, bullish. And it's going to show you these indicators here to point that out to you. Now, if you double click, keep in mind, you can also tool tip this as well. And the, well, this is, this is important for, for alerts, but the point is that you can calculate these divergences and show them on the chart as you need. So smoothing is another very important feature about this specific RSI indicator. And this really takes us to the moving average. Now, this yellow line here is the moving average, and it says SMA. Well, it's important you know that SMA stands for simple moving average, but what's really great about RSI as you get more advanced is you can look at it in different ways beyond just simple moving average. So I actually just added a simple moving average with Bollinger Bands. Now that is really wonderful. And by the way, I'm going to align this. I'm going to have it so that's 25 and 25 because you could technically have a moving average that's being calculated on a different time frame than your RSI. Getting a little advanced here, but that's if you want to do some sort of multi time frame analysis. But for now, I now have a 25 length simple moving average as the yellow line, and I have Bollinger Bands or their standard deviation. So BB standard deviation says two. So if you've ever studied a bell curve, basic statistics, these are your two standard deviation points away from your moving average. Now, that's pretty nice because you can actually really now get a look at how intense the RSI is moving based off of not only the moving average that you have plotted, 
And keep in mind, the moving average is an average price of this RSI line, but you can also see it in the context of standard deviations. This is quite extreme, actually, you can see. It actually went to the bottom of the Bollinger Band here, this RSI move, while going to the near lows of the RSI here and hitting its lowest RSI in several years. So checks all the boxes for quite an extreme move. But once again, RSI is not a guarantee that that means it's a buy. It actually could mean the momentum is just that strong and that this move maybe is only just getting started. So you have to keep an open mind when using RSI. Now I'm going to double click. And I want to make sure I show you the style settings because the style settings are ultimately where you can see the RSI indicator come to life and exactly how all the colors match up. So it says here, RSI line is purple. It's really that, you know, actually first, let me uncheck. You know what we're going to do here? I'm going to uncheck every single color feature so that you can just see the RSI line. Here it is. Now you have all of these style settings to create the RSI indicator of your choice of the specific layout you want, depending on how you like to analyze charts, depending on how you like to read into this indicator, you get to add the colors, look, feel, and data points that you want to see. So I'm actually going to change this line here to white. I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker. I do like the moving average. It just kind of keeps my mind focused that, hey, you know, over a set period of time, this RSI at one point, you know, when you add it all up and look at its average, it sits here. Now I can sort of measure the distance between the current RSI and its, and its moving average. I'm not going to use Bollinger Bands for this part of the video because you already understand them, but you can just see the bands here being added when I check and uncheck each box. Now, what is an important feature about RSI are the three boxes I just check, checked. RSI upper band, RSI middle band, RSI lower band. Now, these are very important features for me to explain to you. I'm going to tell you why. So the upper band here is a way to measure the top band of the RSI calculation. Cur by default, it's set to 70, but if you set it to 100, you can see it readjusts the chart. This is now the very top. It's very rare that you see something get to 100. That would just mean it, uh, I mean, considering the calculation of RSI, it would almost mean it would have to go down dramatically every single at every single moment without ever having a or you sorry this is on the upper band but same to be said with the lower band we'd have to go down or up every single moment without having a single counter move at all so you 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 generally want to keep the default at 70 because you can see this dotted line here it keeps it in a range where it's essential you could sort of think about like at 70 percent of the how extreme this rsi move can get now you can change the colors as well. I'm going to change this top here. I've seen people actually sometimes use RSI for when it gets up here, it's red. That means like it's it's gone too far. It needs to regress back to the mean. When it gets down here, it's green. That means it's gone too low. It needs to regress to the mean. So why don't we actually sort of do that with our upper and lower bands, 70 and 30 make those dotted lines a little bit thicker. And then we have our middle band, which is a very nice, crisp way to see what the middle section is here of all of the RSI that we are calculating. So between the absolute high point and the absolute low point, we are just reminded here's 50 right in the middle. So this is a RSI indicator now that, now that I've set up entirely from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and double click again because I, I want to make sure I really get through all of these settings features so that you know you have full access to them. You also can fill in the background, which I think is a neat feature, because as you get started with that RSI, you start to master the inputs, how you like to use the indicator. Well, you can fill in the background just to add a, another dimension to the indicator and its look and feel, and however you like to see it presented to you. And this RSI fill background fill here is just filling in the space from the top band to the lower band. That's really all, all it's doing. Now, another feature that you might find rather interesting here, and let me make sure I can get this going, is that you can also fill in your overbought gradient fill and your oversold gradient fill as well. And this is actually quite cool to do, as you're going to see here in just a second. 
And so what you can do effectively is change the color of the overbought and oversold conditions so that you can more clearly see that on, on the chart. And you can effectively color in, in this example, this fill in between the overbought and oversold conditions, which really makes it sort of, um, you know, it just, it effectively makes it, uh, why don't we do, let's do, let's just do blue. It effectively gives you the capability to color in this indicator so that it is showing you the signs that you are planning to use or that you've studied or back tested or think are worthwhile. It just gives you that extra color to sort of demonstrate where you are in this indicator based off of its calculation by shading in this, in this case, I've got this oversold gradient fill shading in this area underneath. But I'm going to uncheck these because I just want to I just want to stick to the to the core basics here because what I've done now is I've set up my my RSI indicator just to my liking. If you've watched this video the entire time, you've you now have seen me set this up just to my liking. Now, I'm looking at this chart of Amazon. Keep in mind that now that I have the indicator set up, I can go to any symbol and I'm going to see my exact same indicator. It's going to follow me around anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's a stock. Does not matter if it's a futures or cryptocurrency. Doesn't matter if it's a Forex symbol. It is effectively going to follow me around and be calculated on any data point on TradingView that has the data. Now, what I did think was quite interesting actually is this Apple chart because you don't see this often. Here we are. We're going to wrap up this educational session. It is April 7th, 2025. We're witnessing a rather large sell off. Apple on the RSI here, on this daily calculation I'm doing over about 25 days, is about as uh, over, is about as technically oversold as it's been since 2018. Now we can very quickly go see what happened in 2018, which is a very interesting way to sort of back test this indicator, just go back in time and see how it did. So as you can see here, 2018 oversold and it popped, but, but this is sort of the point I was trying to make that it's not always a guarantee. It actually eventually made a new low. So sometimes there's just such powerful momentum going on in the markets that you want to keep that in mind that yes, it's extremely oversold. Yes, it's giving you that signal, but no, it's not a guarantee. And it actually could be showing that the momentum is really powerful. And as many of you know, it's sometimes hard to get in front of those momentum moves, but still as a trade, not half bad, not half bad at all. So as I go back through here to this specific chart here of Apple, I'm going to be watching this very closely. We will find out if this is really just going to get worse or if after all, just as we saw in 2018, this is a moment where maybe the RSI has just gone too far, too fast. We've got our indicator set up accordingly and there is almost a bounce to be done here. So thanks so much to everyone who is watching these educational videos, please remember that we have over 400 videos on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And our help center is also filled with countless articles and tutorials about these tools. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please let us know.